Hey guys, so we are resuming back from the lunch break uh, and this is HTMD conference 2021 track one and we have with us uh, Damien Van Robes. I hope I took your name correctly. Yeah, please go. Did you okay. Me? OK, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Perfect, Perfect fine. So we have Damien with us here and he will be taking us through a wonderful session about using PowerShell and Graph to manage the Intune resources. And it's almost time. It's 3 p.m. and as per schedule, it's over to you. OK, uh, I can start. Yep, yep, OK. Hello guys and welcome on the How to Manage Device conference. First of all, a big thanks to all organizers, Jitesh, uh, Anoop, Arjit and Bazu. Uh, and, uh, thanks uh, for making it uh, possible. A bit about me before to start. My name is Damien Verby. I'm a system engineer at Metis. I'm also a Microsoft MVP since five years now, and I'm focusing on Perchel, Intune, MS Graph, MDG, uh, WPF, and all things relative to deployment. You can follow me on my Twitter, System Deploy, LinkedIn, and also on my blog, SystemDeploy.com. In this session, we'll see how to use Perchel plus Graph for managing your Intune resource. All examples on PowerPoint uh, for the session will be available on my GitHub on this link. I will upload uh, just after the session. And you can find on my blog some blog post I did uh, relative to PowerShell and Graph, like uh, using Graph Explorer, using Graph plus uh, PowerShell, creating an Azure application, etc. Now, let's start. What is MS Graph? MS Graph is a REST API allowing you to connect to your Azure resource. Um, all, the main idea is that all resources on the Microsoft Cloud are interconnected, and MS Graph allows you to access them, like HTTP, uh, Azure AD, Intune, OneDrive, etc. Um, Graph allows you to automate all actions that you can do through different portals, like Azure AD, Intune, uh, all things that you can do, all action you can do through the portal can be automated with MS Graph and PowerShell. Main uh, things to, to note is the Graph Query link will be graph.microsoft.com. We will use it in all um, URL query for managing um, engine with Graph. Now, what you can do with MS Graph? You can do a lot of things. First, with Intune. You can do, for instance, uh, some remote action on device, reboot, remote connection, wipe a device, uh, uh, locate a device. You can also get information about uh, all device or specific device. You can deploy application on device, migrate your application from MECM to Intune. You can check on this link, a cool uh, solution built by uh, Ben Whitmore, which allows you to uh, migrate your application from on-prem environment from your MECM and migrate them directly to uh, your Intune tenant. This is really cool. You can also create a reporting solution for your Intune device. We will see um, something like this at the end of the session. Now we other, you can do, for instance, some manage uh, user group, creating, modifying, removing, adding member in a group, removing member in a group. You can access to a secret on the cables. A secret is like a password. In my case, I use this solution. Uh, I store a BIOS password, device BIOS password on the cable, and I use uh, and I use Intune and PowerShell to get. Uh, the password on the cable and set BIOS password on the device. Now, the graph query structure. The graph API is composed in two parts, the beta version and the one version. There is two versions. The, the one version is generally used for production. Um, Microsoft recommends to use the one version um, for production script. In the beta version, uh, sees all resources that are in preview. When Microsoft uh, add some new features in Intune, um, you can access them through Graph using the beta API version. Note that uh, the beta API is subject to change. So when you build a script, 
something may work one day, but some day later or weeks, it may not work because Microsoft may have changed some things like in Meta, like in Russell's Pass, etc. Now, Graph Query, how is composed the Graph Query? A graph Query is composed in three parts. The Graph Link, we have seen before, graph.microsoft.com, the API region, one or beta, and the resource to manage. The resource to manage is uh, what you want to manage through the portal and through graph, like a user, a device. In this example, the resource for a device will be device management slash manage device. So now the full structure will be graph.microsoft.com slash uh, one or beta slash device management slash manage device. Now, if you want to manage this, this last one allows you to uh, and manage all your device. Now, if you want to manage a specific item, like a specific device or a specific user, you need to add the ID of the item at the end of the query, like the device ID. And last uh, things to, to keep in mind is to use the appropriate method. We will see what is the method just later. So we have to go about a resource, but what is a resource? A resource is uh, something uh, like a component located in Intune. All things that you can manage through the portal is a resource and can be managed through graph. In this slide, you can see some uh, main resource I use, like device, user, proactive remediation, report, group policy analytics, application, group. All things that you can do on the portal are resources and can be managed through graph. But to manage a resource, you need to get the appropriate path to know what is the path to manage something. It's like its address. For this, you can go to the MS Graph API reference, which is a web, Microsoft website there. And you have some information relative to a resource. You can choose uh, which API version you want to use, the one version or the beta. And then there you have all resources you can manage. Let's go first, for instance, to user. Let's go to user and you have different method, get user or to data user. We'll go to get user. It will give us information like permission to add and the HTTP request. There, the resource for managing a user will be user business. It will uh, allow you to manage all user. Now, if you want to manage a specific user, you need to add the ID of the or the user press simple name at the end of the query. You can find there the full query link, graph.microsoft.com slash uh, API version, there the v1, the user with the nest and uh, the ID or the user principal name to manage a specific user. Now, uh, we have talk about permission because uh, if you want to manage a specific resource, you need permission to be able to manage it. There are two kinds of permission, delegated and application. In my case, as I always use script uh, or like application, I use always application permission. To know what is the permission to add to be able to manage a resource, let's go back to the graph reference link. For user, as we have seen before in the, at the top, you can see permission to add to be able to manage a resource. There, this permission to add for managing a user using uh, application permission. If you want to just get information about a user, add the permission user read all. If you want to be able to, to update a user, it will be user read write all. This is all in a demo. Now we have to talk about the method, but what is a method? There are different kinds of method. The get method allows you to get information about all user or specific user. The post method allows you to create a new resource, like creating a new item, like a, a group, a user. The patch method allows you to update a specific user, like uh, a um, changing the name of a user, changing the name of a device. And the last method we will use is the delete method. It allows you to remove a specific item, like removing a group or user or device, etc. There are different kinds of behavior depending on of the method. The get and delete method don't require a body, but the post and patch method require a body. We will see this.
For the latent batch method, as we are managing a specific resource, you need to add the ID of the resource at the end of the query. So we have talked about body, but what is a body? There, uh, uh, this is an example of a body uh, when you want to list information about a user. A body is something in a JSON format. It will give, give you information about uh, the specific um, item or all item there, it will give us information about a specific device. It will give us, uh, for instance, the device name, OS version, model, manufacturer, etc. A body is required when you want to create or modify an item. In this example, uh, this is a body I use to create a new user. Just add field you want to to add to create the user there, I just add the field display name, mail nickname, job title, user principal name, and use the resource beta user and the method post. Now, if you want to modify user, uh, add a body with just the field to update there. I want to just modify the job title of um, the user from farmer to king. You use the method patch and add the, the body to your query. Now, let's talk about Graph Explorer. Graph Explorer is a website uh, from Microsoft allowing you to understand notion of uh, graph, uh, understand how to use graph notion of uh, query, of resource, method, body, token, uh, response. Uh, it's really useful. We will see this in a demo uh, with different um, resources. First, on roll device, we have seen its device management, managed device, and then uh, proactive remediation. Proactive remediation resource is located in this device management, and this was the resource name is device L script. You can also use parameter in your query. It allows you to filter response of a query. For instance, uh, as we have seen in the previous slide, uh, when you list information about the device, it will give you a lot of information, but if you want just to get some information like the device name or user, you can use, for instance, the select uh, parameter, which allows you to return only specific properties. Let's see this in a demo. We'll go to Graph Explorer there. First step is to sign in. I'm already sign in. Then choose the appropriate method there. I will choose the get method. There, choose the API version. I will choose beta. And this is the resource path. So I want to list all my devices. Go to device. So not the IntelliSense, it's really useful. Device management, then manage device. Now click on run query. And you have there in the response preview, all information about uh, your query. This will list there all my device. The response preview will list uh, the response of your query. And then the request body allows you to add a body to be able to use the post and branch method to create a resource or update a resource. Now, if you would ju I just want to get information about a specific resource, we'll copy the ID of the resource there. Like this, we'll copy the ID at the end of the query. And now click on run query again. And this will give you information just about the specific resource. Now, you have a lot of information there. If you want to just get information about like the display name and ID, I will use this select filter there. And I will add device name and ID. This will display all my device with just the device name and ID properties. Click on run query and I have information I want. Now let's do the same for proactive remediation scripts. So we have seen that proactive remediation resource is located in device management and the name is device health script. There. Click on run query. And there you have all uh, proactive remediation scripts that are located on my tenant. If I want to just get information about the specific proactive remediation script, let's go back there. I will choose another one. 
there and uh, yeah, this one. Copy the ID and add the ID at the end of the query. Click on run query again, and I have all information about the specific proactive recommendation. You have the display name, the publisher, uh, the detection script content. You have also the remediation script content. So I have no uh, remediation script there. So a proactive remediation script contains two kind of scripts: the detection and the remediation. Both are both are ProShell script. And when you update uh, ProShell script on Intune, it's automatically uh, converted to Base64. So there, this is a Base64 uh, for the detection script content. You can convert it back to a base one file using some uh, ProShell code, or you have also some uh, web sites allowing you to copy the, the, the Base64 code and to be able to download uh, the base one file corresponding. We have seen that to manage a resource, you need to get the appropriate path. But how to find the appropriate path? You can use the MS Graph reference link, but it's a bit complicated to understand and to use. There is a really, really easy, easy way. I insist with the really easy, is to use just simply your browser like um, Edge or Chrome and use the developer mode using the F12. I will first uh, list all my device. Go to device, I enable F12 there and go to the network tab. And then I want to list all my device. So I will clear content to avoid there. OK, and I will click on all device. OK, and there, stop recording. And there, you have all um, actions that have been executed when you click on all device. And you can find there the appropriate resource path to um, be able to list your device. It's there. OK, you can find the resource path, graph Microsoft .com slash beta device management manage device with the method get. A cool thing with this if, is you can do a right click on the resource, copy as per shell, and this will help you, uh, allows you to do the same action with per shell. Now let's do the same and we will rename a device. Click on a specific device like this one. OK, enable recording again and we'll click on the three points and Rename a device, add a new name like HTMD, click on rename. OK, stop recording and you can find there the appropriate resource for renaming a device. There, uh, there set device name is an action. So the resource will be graph.microsoft.com slash beta device management manage device, the specific device ID to rename and the action set device name with a method post. As we have seen before, for post and patch method, you need to add a body. Go to payload and you have the appropriate body. It will just uh, be the device name and the name of the device to rename. And of course, you can do a copy as per share. Now let's do the same with listing proactive remediation script. Go to report. Go to endpoint analytic. I will enable recording again and go to proactive remediation. Click on stop recording. OK, and there you have the resource device a script. Go to it here and you have the resource path with the method to use. I insist with the, the, the Developer mode because it's really useful. Uh, when Microsoft adds some new features in Intune, I'll always use it to understand how to manage resources with PowerShell PostGraph. Now let's talk about PowerShell and Intune, the main subject of our session. There are different kinds of modules available on the PowerShell gallery. The first module I used was uh, Microsoft Point Graph. 
it chose the ADL uh, authentication method. ADL meaning Active Directory Authentication Library. Now I use the MSLPS module, which uses Microsoft Authentication Library. Both are different ways to authenticate. And um, important thing that is ADL is being soon deprecated. So Microsoft recommend to use now MSL module in your script. You can get uh, more information about ADL versus MSL on uh, the, all this link. And um, there, oh, sorry, I recommend you, especially the last one from Rudy Ums, who did a really nice job. I won't talk about ADL versus MSL because it's a huge subject. So, authentication and token. There are different kind of uh, authentication method. Like interactive method, it's like uh, when you connect to the Intune uh, portal, you provide a username and a password by providing credential in a base credential object or using an Azure application by providing a secret or a certificate. All this authentication method will help us to get a token and the token will prove that the, uh, the user identity and that the user has permission to be able to manage uh, resource and to be able to authenticate to your tenant. How to decode, to decode a token, sorry. You can uh, decode a token easily using Graph Explorer. For this, we'll see there, in Graph Explorer, go back, go there, and you go to the access token part. You have the token there. Now go there to get token details. It will open this website with the token, and at the bottom you have a decoded token, decoded token part, and you have a lot of information about your token, like the tenant name or when the token will be expiring. No, let's talk about the graph intune module. This module contains a lot of commandlets. Each commandlet allows you to do an action of a resource on a resource and manage a specific resource like a retire, shutdown, sync device, reboot a device, etc. There are many commandlets. But if there is no commandlet available for an action for uh, managing a specific resource, there is a specific commandlet called invoke MS Graph request. Um, this is probably, uh, uh, you, you will use this command that I think because the, this module hasn't been updated, uh, I think, since uh, two years. So uh, for new features, there is no command that available like proactive remediation script. You can find there an example of uh, using this uh, module with proactive remediation script at the URL of the, of the proactive remediation device S script add uh, the URL to a URL parameter and use the method get and use the invoke WMS graph request with a URL method and if you want to create or update uh, something add a body in the content parameter. Now with the MSL plus PPS module there is no commandlet like uh, in the first module uh, to manage resource. For managing resource you have to add the resource URL directly. The main command that we'll use there is get MSL token module, which will allow you to uh, get a token and authenticate. You will need to provide information, for instance, there uh, about my Azure application, like client ID, tenant ID, and uh, client secret or client certificate. And to do a query, use the invoke REST method commandlet. So oh, this is there a quick example of a script I use to locate a device with graph engine module and their Zenwin MSL module. The um, idea is first to get the device ID from its name. Um, the URL for locating a device is device management, manage device, the device ID and action locate device. I will then use the post method to run a new location, location check and use the get method to get the uh, location of the device. And the location will be available using the property device action results device location. This is the code for using MSLPS module. My GitHub, a quick script I did using both module, ideal and MSL. 
allowing you to um, choose um, a device to locate and then display the location of the device in a map in your browser, just like this. This will display the real location in a map using a Google map, I think there. And you can also display the exact address in your partial prompt. So let's talk about authenticating without credential. For this, we will use an Azure application. An Azure application allows you to connect to your engine tenant without providing credential. Um, in this, what do you need to, to, to authenticate with an application and ProShell? You will need the application client ID, which is a sort of username, a unique identifier, and the secret or certificate, which is a sort of password replacement. But what do you need to use? A secret or a certificate? A secret, I will say, is easier to create and to use in a script because it's just a click, click, and then copy the secret in your script. But using a secret is uh, less secure because it's like keeping your password in plain text in your script. Using a certificate allows you to be sure that only the required device or user use the application and be able to manage a resource. Uh, negative part is that using a certificate is not so easy than using a secret. So let's see how to create an Azure application. Go to Azure portal, app registration, new registration, type the application name, and uh, then keep in mind to, to, to copy some information to be able to manage to authenticate for the Azure application with PowerShell, like the client ID and tenant ID. It's available in the overview part. Then we'll add a secret. For this, go to your application, go to certificate and secret, click on new client secret, and choose when the secret will be expired. Again, uh, using a secret is like typing your password in your script. Now, how to authenticate using a secret using both module uh, GraphInTune and MSL. With the GraphInTune, use the command let connect msgraph with the parameter client secret and just add the secret. With the SML, SL, MSL module, uh, convert the secret to a secret string and use the get MSL token with the client ID, tenant ID, and add the client secret in the client secret parameter. You can also use certificate with both modules, but by default, the graph in tune module don't, doesn't allow you to uh, use a certificate. But Nicolas Schutter uploaded on his GitHub uh, this module with the ability to use a certificate. When you upload the, uh, update the module with, uh, with this code, you, there will be a new uh, parameter called certificate sampling. Just copy the sampling of the certificate in this parameter. Note that this will work only with certificate located in the user store. Now, how to authenticate using a certificate with MSL module? Uh, with SM module, uh, using a certificate is native. Uh, for this, go use the get MSL token module as a client ID, tenant ID, and just add the sampling certificate using the client certificate sampling. It's pretty used to authenticate. Now, let's see this in a demo. I will go to Azure there. And oop, I will go to App Registration. We will create a quick uh, Azure application and we will authenticate for it. So let's give it a name, HTMMD. Click on Register. We will let option by default. Okay, I now I have my application. You have to copy first the application client ID to your card there. I will copy in client ID. I already you uh, copy my tenant ID, so it's cool. The tenant ID is available there, and now I will create a new uh, secret. Click on new client secret. I will give it a name like test. Let by default click on add. And now I have my secret. Click on copy there and copy the secret in my variable. Now I have my 
all things to be able to authenticate through ProShell. I will open a new ProShell prompt. I will open two ProShell prompts because I will do some test and another one there. Okay, I will copy information to be able to authenticate client ID, client secret, and tenant ID. Then I will convert the client secret to a secret string and use the get MSL token module with the client ID, tenant ID, and the client secret to be able to authenticate through my Azure application. Okay, I'm authenticating now. You can list information about your token. And now I want to list uh, all my device. I will use the resource device management manage device. And I will use the con commandlet invoke rest method with the e uh, token in uh, either parameter, the URL in the URI parameter, and I will use the method get. And I'm unauthorized. Why? Because, as mentioned previously, to manage a specific resource, you need permission. And I just created an Azure application without permission. For this, we'll go at other permission, like uh, read permission, we'll go to API permission and click on add a permission. Then Microsoft Graph and we'll choose application permission. And so we have a lot of permission to add. We'll choose managed, managed device. And I will just add the read all permission. Click on add permission there. Okay, and don't forget to click on grant admin consent because um, if you don't do this, you will have the same error than before. OK, click on yes. And now I will copy again the code in my other partial prompt. I'm authenticated and I will list my device again. OK. And now I'm able to list my device because I added appropriate permission. Now, let's see how to create custom reports we're using Intune and ProShell. In this example, we use Proactive Automation, Azure Automation, and Power BI. But there is another solution use, using uh, Log Analytics. Um, I will do some blog post on my blog uh, using uh, how to use anal your Log Analytics for the noob. And I will uh, present some uh, some concrete uh, reports. So things to know before starting. There is two things to know uh, for this solution. Proactive remediation, which is the part of Ritune located in endpoint analytic and reports. So this, is part, this allows you to detect device with issue and remediate them. Proactive remediation is composed in two parts, two scripts, the detection script and remediation script. But you can also just use the detection script. This allows you to be able to um, detect some information on your device to get information you want, like local admin, is the BIOS up to date or not, and etc. And um, create a report with this information. Then you have to use a bit of Azure automation, which is a part of Azure and allows you to run a script called a run book directly from Azure. You can also schedule the script or run it uh, on uh, on-prem over one month like a server. You can also use mprop module and use graph with the run book. What's the idea there? We'll first schedule, create and schedule a proactive remediation script, which will get information about my device, like is there a local admin and what is the local admin on my device because i don't want uh, people use local admin account uh, random local admin and there then create and schedule an azure automation which will get use graph to uh, get content from the proactive remediation and get the output of the script meaning 
uh, result of a local admin report, result of a BIOS report. Next step is to convert um, this in output, this information to a CSV and upload it to a blob storage. And last step is to use Power BI. Power BI will connect uh, to the blob storage and get the CSV and we will schedule the report to have something automated. So full process resume in few steps, like creating a proactive management script, creating a resource group, creating a storage account with a container to uh, contain to contain as will contain my CSV, then creating an Azure automation account and use a managed identity in the automation account. Then we, you will create a new runbook and your script that will get results for the proactive information script, export result to a CSV, and upload the CSV to Blob Storage. And last step is to use Power BI. <coughs> what is managed identity for Azure Automation? A managed identity is an account located in Azure Active Directory. It allows you, meaning your application or script, to authenticate and use Azure application, uh, Azure resource without providing credential. Your application will be uh, will use the managed ident identity to get a token and to authenticate. An uh, advantage of this is you you didn't have to deal with credential and credential are never exposed in the code and it can be used without any additional cost. To add a new managed identity, go to your automation account, go to identities and then enable system assign. You will need to add some permission with PowerShell uh, to allow you to uh, do an action of a resource. Then uh, in your runbook, in proc module az account and in your runbook script, uh, use the connect az account with identity parameter. This will allow you to call the manage identity and to uh, access to your Azure Day resource. You can find uh, more information about manage identity on this link. Uh, the main part of the proactive emulation to that allows you to uh, create report is the output of the proactive formulation part. The output allows you to uh, get information about, in, uh, about your device, like driver issue, list local admin, BIOS up to date or not. To, to add an output, add information you want to, to get and to add in your report in the right output commandlet. Then it will be available through the portal, for instance, in the pre remediation output part. Now, it will be also available through graph. As we've seen before, the resource uh, to use to, to be able to use the proactive remediation with graph is device a script. This will give you uh, the main information of the script. But if you want to get more information about the details of the script, like uh, execution of the script and the outputs uh, from device, you will need to use device as script, then the script ID, and the device run step, run state um, resource. There, this will give you information in this example of, a, this is an overview of the script, and you can see in the pre remediation detection script output property, the output of the script. There, the uh, local admin found on a device. So we will use the pre remediation detection script output in a script uh, to build the report uh, to create a CSV. You can find uh, on my blog, there are some examples of Power BI uh, I did, like BIOS version report, which give you information about the current BIOS version installed, um, the model, and the last uh, BIOS version available on the website, Lenovo website. Um, this is just use web information, and this will give you information if BIOS is up to date or not. Another one with a list of local admin located on device, and a device with driver issue. It will uh, give you information if uh, there is some uh, disabled or missing driver on your device. Oh, let's see proactive remediation and graph in the demo. We will use the other method, other module, uh, connect MS Graph to authenticate. 
formal Azure application. Let's go back there. OK. And I will authenticate through the MS Graph uh, uh, Graph Engine module. OK, I'll use the connect MS Graph commandlet. Now I want to get information about all device scripts. So I use the method device script, device L script, and I will use the invoke MS Graph commandlet to get information about a specific script, script, a uh, practical medicine script regarding its name. There, check local admin. And I want to get the ID of the script. OK, forbidden. Why? Because uh, my other application don't have, uh, doesn't have the proper permission. For this, uh, you go, we go device a script there. And if you go to the, you, website to Google, go device a script, and then you can find there the resource used to use and the proper permission to add there, get device a script. And permission to add there, okay, okay, okay. get, okay, uh, application permission. And you will need to add permission device management configuration with all. So as your application. Sorry. Click on add permission. Microsoft Graph application permission. And there, OK. I will add device. Management configuration read all. OK, click on grant admin consent. And I will uh, do it again, just like Brittany. Sorry for the bad joke. And now I am um, able to get information about my uh, proactive room edition script because I added some permission. Now I have information about the specific um, script, but this will give in this information there. Main information. Now I want to get more detail. I will use the device run state uh, resource and use the invoke members graph request with the get method. And there I have all information about the execution of the script. Good. Out grid view. OK, all execution of the script on my different device. You have the script error, etc. And you have there so information uh, there. Oh, sorry, we'll go. there is no output, so I have no local admin. And there, uh, pre remediation detection script output, I have some uh, local admin on my device. Now, I want to get some uh, this information with other information like the device name, username, etc. You have all this information in the manage device property. We will format a bit uh, uh, this in an array. We'll get information about the detection script output and uh, other information from the manage divide part. We'll go uh, create a new array like this up and copy the code. Copy. Copy. And now. I should have better information with just some one thing I want. Use a name or its version and local admin found on my device. Now, let's see some um, how to use Azure automation in my tenant. Let's go back there. OK. Go to automation account. And my uh, automation there is automating report. Okay. You have there in the identity, you have their module. Uh, you can find there the Azedecons module. And in identity part, where are you? Identity, identity. Ah. 
identity there, you have the managed identity status on. And go now to runbook. And the runbook is all my script uh, I, cre I created on Azure Automation. This one allows you to clean uh, group members and there the local admin report. I will open a storage account. Go to edit. And this is the script to uh, get information about the proactive remediation script name check local admin and um, update uh, that information in a uh, upload information in CSV. The uh, storage account is called SD reporting, so I will go to storage account. SD reporting. And go to my container. And there through the Power BI CSV folder. And you have information to, to give about your uh, tenant, etc. Uh, this is a part to get a token and the connect as asset account identity to use the managed identity. There, I will use a, a, a quick code to uh, get information about proactive remediation using device S script, get the proactive remediation ID, and now get detail and uh, create an array with information I want. And last step is to create a CSV and upload it to uh, my blob storage using a set as uh, storage blob content uh, commandlet. Now I'll go and click on test pane and click on start. This will uh, uh, run the automation run book and this, uh, in the background this will um, get information about uh, result of this proactive remedial script uh, uploaded to a, uh, to a CSV on a blob storage there. Click on refresh. It can take a while. OK, completed. So now I will find my CSV there. OK, check local admin. And last step is to use Per BI to uh, get information about your, to, to get your CSV directly from the blob storage and uh, create your report with this information and schedule the Power BI report. Uh, I think I'm done. I am finished the session. Uh, I hope you I have been understandable and you enjoy the session. And of course, don't hesitate to contact me on Twitter, for instance, if you have any question relative to the session, ProShell, WPF, GraphInTune, etc. Hey Damien, that was a great session delivered by you. Many thanks. Yep, and I see there are two questions from the audience or the attendees. Uh, yeah. And uh, if you go into the Q and A section there, uh, from on the top uh, where you see the chat, you have a Q and A section. Okay, where? Uh, uh, yeah. Just yep. Okay. So, so from here, there will be three columns again: new, published, and dismissed. So in new, uh, yep, you have two questions there to answer. Yeah. Uh, so, is there any way to get list of local user accounts? In any endpoint, uh, yes. This is the same way I use um, to to get a, uh, to create a report of a local admin account. But in this example, I think it's not specific to uh, local admin, but generally local uh, account. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the same way. You can find on my blog uh, the, the way to to proceed to get a local admin account. But I will probably publish something relative to list local uh, user. It's just to change um, the, the, the name of the, lo the local account and uh, in the pr in the script, and you will be able to get local user. I, I will do this uh, on my blog. If if you want to contact me on Twitter, and I will uh, provide you the script to get this. Uh, I will I will probably do it in the next two weeks uh, uh, on my blog. That's and, uh, great. 
for the question is there a way to get a report of an applic application and uh, yes uh, you can uh, go through the portal and uh, if you want to to get information for instance is there the application to get report application an ancient device here yeah. um azure if you go there to uh, with the module, there is a, a graph engine module. There, are, there is some uh, command led to do this, I think. But uh, with MSM, MSL module, you need to to get the uh, resource path. So just go to application or device. And uh, for instance, if you go there to a specific device, uh, we'll show this one. And uh, OK, enable recording. And go, for instance, to uh, discovered apps. OK. Click on stop recording. And then there you have information. I think it should be there. Yeah. Manage device. Uh, the resource path will be device management, manage device, device ID, and uh, detected apps. And uh, uh, if you want to get information about a user, application user, uh, Go to user, select a user, I think. The, the, the main idea is to get the, the appropriate resource pass and you will be able to, to get information about the application. Click on the clear there, so enable recording. And if you go to application, you should see the list of application for user. Uh, just need to find the appropriate resource in all this and uh, da, 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 da. get application no. as in application for user okay yeah i will say say user id and as in application uh, resource but you you have some other different way to to proceed for this Uh, do 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 like formatting uh, an array with uh, information you want you to get. Um, I don't know, uh, I admit. My case, I always use the proactive formulation. And uh, you have also, um, with Pro BI, a way to, to get information through the, uh, don't, remember, don't remember, data warehouse, don't remember their exact name, I think it's there, uh, report uh, with, uh, well, I don't remember uh, yeah data warehouse and uh, with this you can uh, there i think it's this it's talking about the data and you can add the access to through pro bi to this uh, part and get information directly from engine but um, the data warehouse doesn't uh, give a lot of information just some information like uh, um, device uh, information but i don't think it give you information about the, the application. Uh, this is why I I don't use the data warehouse. And I use a proactive modification to, to get uh, information I want and uh, upload it to a CSV and use Power BI to get the CSV information from the CSV. Uh, if you go there, don't remember where uh, I, I saw something like a list of information you you can get, but I don't remember where. Port using there. Ah. Yes. Yep, 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 yep. Get data. Ah. I don't remember where, where I found this, but uh, I, I thought I, I know that uh, with this kind of method, data warehouse, you can uh, can 
uh, get uh, all information you want. So this is why I use proactive rumination for this. And uh, I, I think that there are some other guys from uh, MSN Point MG, like Maurice and uh, Jan Kittil, we, we use a proactive remediation with uh, log analytics for this because proactive remediation will help you to, to get uh, all real information you want to get. Because uh, on Intune, there are some information and you can get uh, all the uh, information you want. I hope uh, I'm clear enough. <laughs>